Hello, my name is Guillermo Gallego, and in this video, I will be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of event-based cameras, such as the dynamic vision sensor or prophecies change detectors, and the challenges that these new vision sensors pose. Let us analyze this from the point of view of the working principle and its consequences. We have the following fact, that DVS pixels respond independently and asynchronously to relative light intensity changes. What does it mean? The consequences or potential advantages are the following. Uh, if we go over the keywords, one of the keywords is the last one, intensity changes, right? This means that the event sensors, they do not produce absolute intensity. They do only intensity changes, which means that internally they are doing comparisons and they only uh, output informative pixels. So all temporal redundancy is removed. And because they only transmit these intensity changes, which are informative, then they are very efficient and low power. They are only focusing the energy in things that are informative and, mat and matter. And this intensity changes also means that uh, the output is sparse and therefore it has a low computational and storage cost. Another key word in the above fact is asynchronous. So, and this has to do with uh, high speed. So the sensor is a high speed one and high temporal resolution. Ideally it's continuous in time, but there is a clock at, I don't know, one megahertz. And the sensor is, has low latency and uh, because it's very high speed, it also has very small motion blur. And the third keyword is that the pixels respond independently, which means uh, they do not have a global shutter. They don't talk to other pixels. And this means that every pixel has its own operating point, And therefore, overall, um, they have a very high dynamic range. What are some of the challenges uh, that these sensors pose? Well, because they have a very unfamiliar output, uh, because the sensor produces a stream of events rather than a sequence of images, then we cannot simply apply image-based computer vision methods to the output of these sensors. Um, so the challenge is to design novel vision algorithms. And if we take into account the intensity changes, well, because we don't have absolute intensity uh, directly available, it means these novel vision algorithms, they need to reconsider the photometric aspects. Um, so we don't have absolute intensity, we have only intensity changes, and this happens mostly at edges. So we have to design algorithms taking into account that the information that we have is mostly about moving edges and in logarithmic scale. And uh, the other challenge is that the output is uh, asynchronous and sparse, which means that novel vision algorithms need to reconsider uh, the space-time processing and variable data rate of these sensors. Yes, so basically there are two things that, um, that they need to be reconsidered. One is the photometric aspects because we have intensity changes rather than absolute intensity. And the other one is the space-time output aspect because we don't have a, a sequence of images. We have a sparse a stream of events. If we could uh, write the advantages in some keywords, well, well this is probably a list. Uh, redundancy removal, which means that it's sparse, the output, um, and low bandwidth and storage cost. The sensor also has the, poten the advantage that it's low power, so it's efficient. It's a high-speed sensor, which means low latency, high temporal resolution, and almost no motion blur. And additionally, the sensor has a very high dynamic range. What are the disadvantages? Well, we've mentioned them, but these are also part of the, some of these are part of the challenges. So it has an unfamiliar output um, because there is no absolute intensity information, only log intensity changes. Um, so we cannot simply apply computer vision algorithms uh, that are from modern uh, or standard cameras. We require new algorithms. And basically this means that we have to rethink computer vision all that we have been studying has assumes that visual information is given in the form of 
a sequence of images, and that's no longer the case. Now we have instead a stream of asynchronous events, and ideally we should rethink the way that we do computer vision, the way that we extract information from so, uh, such intensity changes. Another disadvantage, uh, it's the lowest spatial resolution compared to the resolution of uh, standard frame-based cameras. So the original DVS had a spatial resolution of 128 by 128 pixels. And this is no longer the case. Now the latest event-based cameras, they have about one megapixel resolution, which I think it's sufficient. Um, because the more pixels that you have, the more events need to be processed. And as we mm, could see, for example, in the generation four of um, Samsung or Prophecies cameras, they can produce up to 1,000 million events per second, which is huge amounts of events that need to be processed. Another disadvantage is that uh, uh, event-based sensors are noisy, uh, and the noise is not fully characterized. Another disadvantage is that the software ecosystem is not as developed as for standard cameras. So there is no standard such as OpenCV for event-based cameras. Currently, every company or every research group is using its own software, except for some that may be shared by some groups. So it's like an entry barrier to start working with the sensor. And another one, finally, is the price. So these sensors are still expensive, above several thousand dollars per camera, um, and this is yeah, an entry barrier, but uh, hopefully price will drop uh, as it enters mass production in the same way that it happened with uh, depth sensors. They needed uh, something like the Kinect to lower the prices. So what are the challenges? We could summarize them in these two, to unlock the potential advantages of event cameras by designing novel computer vision algorithms that try to avoid introducing bottlenecks, and to demonstrate the impact of the resulting computer vision systems to tackle problems that are currently difficult with standard cameras or new problems. And in designing these novel computer vision algorithms, we need to take into account the special characteristics of the sensor, um, which is the, the fact that they are synchronous, that the output is sparse, and they convey intensity changes, and they are noisy. That's it. Um, finally, I would like to make some comments about ideal and real event data. So ideal data, uh, yeah, it's noiseless. There is no noise, noise free. And uh, real event data, it's actually um, has some noise and this noise is uh, non-uniform and it has not been fully characterized as I write a little down. So pixels, they have limited speed. The pixel bandwidth is finite. That's one thing. Um, another one is that there is something called the refractory period. So it's a time after an event gen has been generated when no other event is produced at that pixel. So there is like a very small blind time. Um, and the noise depends on the amount of incident light at the pixels and on multiple other factors. As we have seen, maybe in some videos, strong edges have trailing events, which, has, which is uh, something called the switch bouncing in circuitry. This is just to say that uh, event cameras, uh, actual real cameras, they, they are noisy, and this noise is uh, not well understood yet. Uh, it's far from ideal, an ideal sensor. Um, nevertheless, uh, in this course, we will deal with uh, with this, and we will try to go over or design algorithms that are able to handle uh, real world situations. That is, they are able to handle noise. That's it. Thank you very much.